Here we are at the Assyrian, possibly one of the most impressive sites in Egypt, possibly the world. This is officially dated to the time of Seti the first, which would have been completely roofed over, you know, thousands of tons of stone in this whole construction. And it really is something to behold. So I'll give a brief explanation with the group here. And we'll have a look at some interesting features, including the flower of lifes, the mortise and tenon joints, and the evidence of ancient technology. So we're just taking a walk down one end of the Assyrian, actually inside one of the chambers, and you can just see even the stonework inside these chambers is very intricate. It's kind of badly weathered because of the, the water that's been in here, but look, you can see the detail there, the granite. And we're looking along one side of the Assyrian here. And you can just see that the ground level is at the very top. So this was built deep into the ground, or it's so old that the ground level was in fact down here many, many thousands of years ago. So we're gonna walk along one of the edges here, and I just wanna show you this, because you can see some of the stonework behind me is almost identical to what we find in ancient Peru and Bolivia. kind of see evidence of the puffy polygonal stonework. You've got like drill holes, core drills. You've got the seams, which you can't even fit a credit card or a banknote between. You've got the polygonal areas. You've got these nubs and everything else. Absolutely incredible. It's amazing to get this close up. It just looks like you're in ancient Peru. As we look up the wall, you can see that, you could just be at Machu Picchu or Sacsayhuaman. It really is quite amazing. Got a little nub there. Got a very good, decent one up there. Then we've got the cornering here in the shade. Look at that. That is just like the cornering, the exact style you find in Peru. It's like, it's like this is the same builders. This is quite stunning. I mean, there's a, they don't really look after this very well, I've got to be honest with you. They couldn't easily clear out this water and make it pristine like it should be. But nonetheless, you can actually see one of the mortise and tenon joints there, like we find on top of the stones, like at Stonehenge. I also want to tell you this interesting story from Dorothy Eady, or Omseti, who was who hit her head as a child back in the early 1900s and claims to have had a past life here with Seti I and so forth. And she has memories of coming in the Assyrian and all the ceremonies and the Osiris ceremony that took place here. But also, there she had three accounts of very specific healings that took place here with herself, where she, would, she splashed some of the water in her eyes and it healed her eyesight, which was getting much worse. There's another woman as well who had the same problem or similar problem with her eyes and she had remarkable healing effects of that. And if someone, there was a kid who was placed inside the pool and drank some of the water for a few weeks after and cured themselves of epilepsy. And so is this a healing temple as well as being a master megalithic construction? Is there more to these sites than meets the eye? Like the experience I had in the Great Pyramid subterranean chamber when I felt healed after being really sick just the time I was in there. So is the Assyrian the same? This place was clearly a, 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 you know, a, a site of reverence uh, and possibly somewhere where people would come for healing purposes at a much later date. I mean, the water rises up from the water table to create this island in the middle, which perhaps is why it's given the name the, the Assyrian. We have much later um, evidence of activity here in these flower of life symbols, which you can see on the inside of these uprights over 
there. I mean, you can see too clearly there are others uh, to the side. Um, and they're probably done during the Greek uh, occupation of Egypt during the Ptolemaic times. Uh, but the, obviously the flower of life is a very important symbol. Uh, what it's doing here, not sure, but uh, it's fascinating. You can also see within some of the, the uprights here where there's cuts, vertical cuts, where quite clearly either parts of them have either been tried to be broken off at a later point or whether this is actually quarry marks that were, that were done at the time of construction itself. Well, that gives us a small amount of indication of the techniques that they were using to make these blocks. I can see more of them on the top of, of this upright right in front of us here. So this is just so much like being in ancient Peru. You look at some of these stones here, the polygonal stonework, the niches, even kind of drill holes here. This is unbelievable. So here in this shaded corner, we've got some other interesting features here. Again, we can see the shaping, the cornering of the, uh, the stonework, the quartzite and granite. We can see the doorways have been beautifully carved out. And here we've got a good section of the roof as well. And you can see, interestingly, the way it kind of joins up with the top sections, the top lintels. Like on top of the lintels was this roof. And so, and you got polygonal sections there as well. So this is just so much going on in this particular site. And in here we have all these niches, uh, these rooms. And even this one looks like it had a water kind of pool in it as well, like we find all around the site. And again, clear evidence of very advanced technology. So just have the opportunity to come in here is incredible. They don't let the general public in. We have to get special permission. That's something we provide all on our, all our tours every November. So if you want to see the Assyrian close up, join us. You can just see behind me, like we're the only people in here. All the rest of the group have just gone into the next section. So you get moments. We have the whole place to yourself. <music> So one thing we find with these walls at the Assyrian is not only do we find the nubs, we find the protrusions, the indentations, mortise and tenon joints on top of them, but also the angles and the very small stones that are kind of linking up the corners could represent some mathematical kind of story. Now we know the stories, the elaborate stories of Osiris and Isis and the, the netters or gods, but there's evidence now they found at Saxe Wuman where they think perhaps there's actual astronomical, uh, met metrological and sacred number systems encoded within the shapes, size, measurements, geometry and orientation of the stones. And this could well be present here at the Assyrian. This is just so incredible to be in this sacred Osiris temple which was dedicated to him probably built many thousands of years ago before the Seti the first era I believe this this dates back at least to the time of the Bali temple could but it could be like super ancient it could be like the one of the first constructions here like going back 10 12 thousand years according to some theories if you look at if it's referring to the time of the gods or the followers of Horus who I think did the early megalithic work. They were the master builders, possibly linked with Sumeria and the giant builders, because they in tradition were the master stonemasons and metallurgists who had all the skills. And their knowledge was passed around the world from a very early epoch. But yeah, just having this moment here, with no one else around, the group have just gone up the avenue, which we're gonna to go to in a moment, but this is, one of the experiences of a lifetime and I do recommend you join us and do this with us because we have two hours in here to experience this all to ourselves and no other groups come in so you can view it from above you can view it from within you can go into the niches see the sacred geometry 
flower of life carved here. And to me, they represent the kind of pinnacle of how, the, and it gives an inkling of how they were working this site. They were working with sacred geometry. This golden section here, this sacred number, there's intricate measurement systems. Everything is precise. And that, to me, suggests this is some kind of machine, some kind of healing machine temple where people would come in here and have remarkable experiences. And when it was pristine with the roof and everything functioning with the water, this would have been much more than just what we see today, a megalithic site. But anyway, let's go in. Let's go into the main corridors. These were built a little bit later during the time of uh, Seti I, but these are interesting in themselves. And it just it proves that even when Seti was building these temples, there was actually a, re a reverence to these, this earlier structure. And there's astronomical imagery. There's the Cyrus kind of ceremony that took place and much more. So we're now walking up towards the exit. We're going at a different exit. We're going to walk the full length of the sloping sort of avenue here. There's carvings all over these walls, all provided and documented by Seti the First. You can see some of those here. You can see some of the intricate designs. Yusef knows all about this, but me, I'm here for the Assyrian. This is the most, probably the most interesting site in the whole of Egypt, which is, I believe, contemporary with the Valley Temple and the Pyramids of the Giza Plateau. And so we must consider there's a much earlier culture here, possibly even older than that. Now exiting the kind of corridor of Seti, which leads down to the actual Assyrian itself. I've not actually been to this part before. So this is quite interesting. We've got Ahmed here trying to hide from the camera. So that is the sacred entrance that Seti created to go into the Assyrian that he discovered whilst building this site. What's so interesting is that there's actually what they call a, the funeral passage that comes in from the west, which means that you move towards the east and you've got all these uh, Book of uh, Gates, Book of Heaven, the Amduat, the so-called books of the underworld that are all written along this funerary passageway. Um, and then you get to a certain point uh, that's actually um, you know, in line with the Assyrian itself and you then come through another almost north-south orientated uh, passageway uh, to actually enter inside the Assyrian itself which means that you're going from west to east to north, um, which is identical to the orientation of all the main pyramids during the Old Kingdom period. Um, because with those, the, 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 the body starts in the west, moves to the east, um, and then is shot almost like a, out of a gun barrel towards the north and, and the northern stars. Um, and you know you have exactly the same orientation here. Uh, the actual orientation, just to get it on record, uh, using my compass was probably around 14 to 16 degrees east of north. Uh, I don't know whether that has any kind of astronomical uh, value or not, we're going to have to check that one out. But I find this interesting because here you have unquestionably uh, the beliefs and practices that were invoked at the time of the Old Kingdom period. Um, and that, to me, is probably more evidence to the fact that this is much older than the time of Seti I. But he was aware of what was going on and continued some kind of tradition that already existed, perhaps for thousands of years. So Yusef just been pointing out that there's this corner block down here, which is part of the actual full top roof is absolutely huge you can't see it. it's all under the rubble but it would have come up like 20 or 30 feet across and then it kind of joins up and it's kind of puffy on top which is very very odd and so we're seeing like even the roof had a kind of puffy part on top but then on top of that would have been 
kind of shaped and angled stone. It's almost like a classic roof that we see in some of the temples on either end of the site. So just there, you can see the scoop marks on one of the walls. Now, we couldn't see that a, uh, a little while ago when we were in there because of the time of day. And as the sun moves around, the nubs stand out, but there's actual scoop marks there. And I'll, I'll try and get some, uh, I've got in as close as I can actually to sort of show you, but this just shows you that we're seeing the same styling as we see as one quarry, we see Oyente Tambo in Peru, and also we see a Stonehenge, and there are remarkable resemblances to Stonehenge with this site. So, and we know there were Egyptian connections with Britain. Now, speculating here, but does that prove that there could be kind of a Stonehenge connection with this site? Because we're seeing so many of the same things, including mortise and tenon joints on some of the tops of the stones. Anyway, we're finishing our visit here, our two hour private visit, and absolutely delighted. You can see it from up here as well. You've got a beautiful view of the site. And I do recommend you join us in November when we come back here every year to check this out because we're obsessed by this place. This is on par with the Giza Pyramids, the Valley Temple, Aswan Quarry. And we just appreciate your time. Thanks for watching with us. Thanks for joining us on this tour around the site. We've pointed out some very interesting features which you may not have seen before. Um, and please subscribe, please like, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think of this site. And we'll see you next time, Megalithomaniacs. Thank <laughs> you.